All right. So for today's practice, as far as uh, the injury report, we have Danny Trevathan um, will be out today, along with Marquise Goodwin, both of them. Danny has knee soreness, and Marquise Goodwin uh, has, a, has foot soreness and a contusion. So we're going to hold them out today. Uh, back in will be <coughs> Eddie Jackson um, off the NFI, so we'll be smart with him. And then it'll be good to get uh, Christian Jones, Pat Scales, and Elijah Wilkinson um, activated off the reserve COVID. Other than that, no changes as far as uh, injuries go. Um, today will be a 10-10-10 practice. So each period is carded, uh, telling the, you know, where, where to go with the football. And it's a good job, good time to get good solid reps and work on our timing. Um, obviously, the Dolphins get in here tomorrow, which will be good. I think it will change up some of the monotony of the, of the camp. Looking forward to that. And uh, then before you know it, we'll have our preseason game. So. With that, I'll go ahead and open it up. Danny Jackson, what do you imagine he'll be able to do this week, especially against the Dolphins? Yeah, we're we're gonna Pat, we're gonna work through the the, the volume of reps um, in practice, and then we'll get together uh, the next couple nights here and start putting together an idea of getting through these next two days of what it's gonna look like um, for the preseason game too. You know, I think just I'm sure you guys are gonna a ask some of the, these questions with that, but the mindset of the reps for the preseason game is gonna be more. Um, individual base than it is by like first team, second team, third team per se. So there's a little juggling that goes on with how we want to do that for that game. And then obviously we also got to get through these next two days with, with Miami too, you know, so. In a, in, in, a, in a previous preseason, the first game maybe starters would play. One or two series. Yeah. Is that still the plan or, or do you look at that differently? Yeah, no, no, I would say that's about the, the general plan is, is one to two series. You know, if you get three plays, um, you might want to, you know, or like two, two, three play series, maybe one more. I think it's more probably play, play count, maybe eight ish, eight plays, eight to ten, and then some guys might be less, and some might be a few more. Matt, from the, from the start, Jackson has been very engaged in practice. He had like a, a play sheet or something. He's in there. He's on the side. Can Jenkins do that same thing with the offensive line, as far as you know, really kind of taking mental reps or whatever, just being more involved than he is? Because it doesn't seem like he's been quite like that. He, he's still in, yeah Eddie, Eddie it's good to have the script out there for Eddie because he gets to see all, all parts of um, you know what they're doing and, and again he kind of know he's been through this before with knowing how the practice goes with, with Tevin um, he's still doing it he's out there he's listening to the protections I mean they basically unless it's a run they're listening to just very few protections and so I, I think he's doing a, a good job of still staying engaged um, with that. And we want to continue to make sure that, you know, when he's out there, like he is, he's all, he's all in. And um, I think he's doing a good job so far. You suggested that Justin would get a, a pretty good amount of work in preseason games. What's the plan for him this week? And does offensive line health factor into that? At all? Yeah, um, it, it, it definitely does. And I think when you, when we say that, uh, there's some ways to, to work through some of that. Uh, uh, again, when you look at it from, if you flip it and you say, okay, what is the other team going to do? Well, most of the time, too, they're playing their starters for one or two reps and or one or two series. Um, so we'll just have to make sure that schematically we do some things that we need to do. If we feel like we need to help out there, um, then we'll do that. But Justin needs the only way we can evaluate is by seeing him play, and we got he's got to get uh, valuable reps. And um, again, even to the point of as we go through these three games. Uh, being able to just see what he can do with different players and different teammates. It, it could be first, second, or third team across the board. Is that a fine line, though, Matt, to walk? I mean, because I mean, obviously you want to get him the reps, but at the same time, you don't want to risk what sure. you back up off it, it is a fine line, and that's, that's kind of the challenge for, for all these guys. I mean, there's a lot of guys. We go, we'll go through as a staff. We've discussed it preliminary the other night on our last staff meeting. We talked about, okay, what's kind of the mindset of what we want to get out of these players? Now you go specifically, you go deeper, and you say, okay, you know, we, we got to be able to evaluate. That's the beauty of the preseason. But we also need to be smart because we need all these guys for week one, and that's the balance. And some of that is, you know, it's that catch-22. You play somebody, and all of a sudden they get hurt, and you say, well, you, you dummy, why would you do that? And then the other one is you don't play them. You say, well, they need the reps. So that is a fine line. I'm curious to see with Justin in live game action that you haven't been able to see in this setting yet. I, I just I want him to be able to just just cut it loose and play without thinking. You know, stay within what we do in the progressions, but um, just just kind of let your personality show on the football field. Uh, 
The other stuff that we critique him on, the tempo in and out of the huddle, all that, that'll happen on his own. Now he gets, we get to truly see what he's going to do when the lights are on, uh, and he's playing full speed, and, and he, it's live. You know, we're not doing live with the quarterbacks. Matt, do, you view, do, you, do you view the next two days of practice as an extension of the preseason game in terms of the, uh, the work that you're going to do? And what is the, what is your plan? How are you going to approach the next two days? What are you going to try to get out of it? Yeah. So. Um, for, for sure, having having these two days, I think that's the benefit too of being able to get with another team is um, you're able to to really see. First of all, you, our guys are so used to seeing the same stuff, offense and defense. They're seeing all the same plays, the same players, the same techniques, and how you do things. It's a total change up now. Somebody's gonna have a different move coming off the edge, um, so that part is, is great. With that said, I know we're sitting here every day going through our uh, injury report. You know, I've talked to other coaches across the league right now, and it's it's uh, we we all just need to be a little bit cognizant of the amount of reps and the groups. It's it's hard right now for a lot of teams across the league to get three groups in. The teams are there's there's some there's some challenging uh, uh, there's some challenges with the reps. So we'll be cognizant of that uh, with Coach Flores with with trying to figure out what we want to do there and work through that. But that said, this is definitely a huge advantage having this going into the preseason game, especially for the, the ones. Have you and Flores had a meeting about this or yeah. anything yet? Yeah, we talk, we talk um, you know, a lot. So I don't know whether that's once a week or emails and texts and calls that we're talking all the time because uh, we want to make sure that this thing goes the right way. You know, you always have the rules of engagement. It's uh, guys get juiced up and go and uh, you want to eliminate fighting. You want to just be competitive, be smart. And when you have two head coaches that believe in the same thing like we do, um, we'll talk to the guys up front on that and uh, let the guys compete. Man, you well, just, uh, uh, look, go ahead, go ahead Colleen. Statistically, what were the challenges of getting another team in here to practice? And, and are there any additional challenges with COVID? No, um, logistically, I, you know, we put that on our, our support staff. They did a great job, again, they, they met with each other months ago when this all came out and just talked through, okay, wh where do we go for this? What, it's all about backup plans, right? If weather hits, where do they go? Um, where, where are they at with their hotel? Where are they staying? And when are they coming here? We have to build that time element into it too. Um, are they practicing a different time of day than, than we are? And so um, everyone did a great job of putting that together. I mean, as far as up to even last night, um, uh, Coach Flores and myself were working through the, the practice reps and scripts and personnel. What, what personnel are we going to show? So it's there's fairness there, and we're not coming out doing some stuff where we're not prepared for it. Last week or, or about a week ago, you were sort of arrow up when we asked about Tevin. Mm -hmm. is, that, is he sort of plateaued? or is that... uh, Again, I think right now it would probably be the same as where he was. Um, we're still working through it, and he's. I think our doctors and, and Dre have a pretty good plan in place for just trying to get him to get out here. So I wouldn't say there's much change from a week ago from what I said, but obviously every day that goes by, Brad, we want to. You know, we know it matters, so we got to uh, continue to work through that. Yeah, you've always said on as far as uh, Justin Field is concerned that your your quote will know it when we see it. Mm -hmm. And I know you haven't played a single preseason game yet, but where is he on that scale? Are you seeing things that maybe you didn't expect to see to this point? Yeah, there's some plays that he's making. I thought uh, the last day that we were out there was, was prop. He put three consecutive plays together that that Coach Flip and I were talking about in the quarterback room. In Coach Flip's opinion, it was uh, three of his best plays um, in a row consecutively for different reasons, uh, all of camp. And so he had a really good day. Um, the previous day. Right, uh, he was just okay, and mentally. And so, um, what I think we're looking for from him is the ability to rebound from maybe a, a poor decision. That I think is one of his strengths. He's shown that to us. So now, when you get to the game, um, how is all that going to go down? You know, and we won't know that until we see it. But he's he's doing a great job of, uh, like 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 for instance, the other day, part of the. Per Part of the stuff that Flip really liked, and I liked too, and Coach Laser did, is he had really calm feet in the pocket with the progression. So it was it was a real easy, calm three step from the gun, one hitch rhythm throw on time on a post route in the back corner of the, or the, the back end of the end line. So um, that part, when you see that, if you can string those together, it just shows that you trust the concept, you trust your progression, you trust the fundamentals that Flip's teaching you with your feet. 
and that's where you want to be able to take those practice individual reps and put it into the into play, and he did that. Sunday was his best day, then, you think, to talk about Was that, three. what's today, yeah, Tuesday? The three consecutive good Yeah, days. it was the end, it was that last day we were, the last day we were out right, there. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. The uncertainty about the basketball, how big of a boost is it getting Elijah Wilkinson back, and what do you hope to see from him in terms of him yeah, well, with numbers, you know, getting him back is, is key just because we were getting low there. Um, you know, he, he coming into this camp was, was there starting at left tackle. He understands it is a competition. So he's probably chomping at the bit right now to get out there and, and, con and continue to compete. But I know for us, um, and he knows it, and Juan's been clear with all of them, like, listen, you guys come out here and you get a chance now. Uh, somebody, somebody's got to take it. And so he's, he's getting back and he's ready. He's, he's mostly played on the right side during his career. Has he shown that he's that he's comfortable with that left side? I think so. Yeah. Again, these guys are learning. He's new, right? So he's learning techniques from Juan, but uh, he's willing. And I think that's all you can see is or say is if he's willing to do it, just keep doing it. And again, you're going up against uh, some pretty good uh, rush ends. What's impressing most uh, about Kendall Vildor, and what do you hope to see from him in the preseason? Game? Just just his, uh, his his I think his confidence more than anything. He's playing faster. Uh, and then preseason, just go out and play. Make plays, you know. The, these guys are – him and Jalen on the, on the outside right now, I think, are playing fast. It's nice to have two young guys out there doing their thing. But probably more than anything, from last year to this year, I see his confidence grow. Matt, with uh, Eddie Goldman, do you just have an update on, on his health? Like, is he doing okay? I, get, I don't know. I honestly I, – I haven't – I have not talked to him. So, I, I suppose so. I would have heard if, if not. Yeah, with, just, with Justin Fields, how much will you try to take him through a typical game week? This week, so he learned what that's going to be like here. That won't be this week. Um, that'll be as we get into Buffalo and Tennessee. We're going to simulate those weeks more so of, of that um, and, and give our coaches, too, the ability to get used to that. But, um, you know, I think right now for him, w when we get to the point of installing our, our plays for Miami um, in a few nights, then that will simulate. I think Flip will be able to kind of simulate how that goes. Really, it's the day before the game when we do our mock game and we go to the hotel. That's where he gets a little taste of it. And then the pregame, going out on the field, going through the warm ups, being on the sideline. You know, he's not used to being on the sideline to start a game. So, like little things like that. And then going in and making sure he's, he's ready to go. Back to Eddie Goldman. I guess, what are your emotions? You didn't have him last year, and then he comes back, and then he ends up on the COVID list pretty quickly, I guess. What is your emotion just kind of handling that situation and Mine? apparently not being able to get a hold of him? Yeah, yeah. No, you know, um, maybe I'm wrong for this, but I, I really I don't have any stress about it. I really don't. I think he's been great. He's been in communication with our coaches and, and team ed and just trying to make sure he's able to stay, uh, stay in shape with any equipment that he needs to do or whatever it is just on his own, just, just stay in shape. And that's all you can ask for. Um, but I, I just know the confidence that he gave me was when he came in here and just was the same old Eddie. You never know being off like that. Like, is he going to be way out of shape? Is his mind in it? And he couldn't have been better. So this happened. It's a learning tool for all of us, for everybody, in a lot of different areas. And, and now we're able to, um, you know, be better from it. And he'll get back here hopefully sometime. And get, get, get. I'm just glad this happened now and not in the season. We had, Matt, we had asked you last week whether you were worried about a team from Florida, which has had a lot of COVID cases mm -hmm. coming up here, and you said no. But you're going to have twice as many players, you know, at the facility. Are, are there is there anything you're going to do? Uh, at, I guess it qualifies as a precaution or something that you don't do in your own practice just to uh, try to manage any COVID risk. I really don't think so. Um, you know, I, I don't. I don't. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think. Coach Flores will either. I mean, we'll, we'll, I'll get with him and talk to him tonight about that. But for the most part, there's not much change. I mean, these guys are going through their training camp practices. We're doing ours. And, um, you know, I, I just think that just being smart in the normal stuff that they tell you to do with try to keep your distance and where you're at and all that stuff. But for the most part, um, not too much change. There's going to be any, there's going to be no interaction between your teams beyond just what's going on here. They're not going to correct afterwards. Or correct. They, they have a location um, that we put them in where they're going to where they get to go to and have their the little area, just like we did in Denver a few years ago <clears throat> in the field house. So they'll be separate separate from us and um, do their thing. And and again, um, I think our I think our people put together a pretty good plan on how to handle any type of backup stuff. 
What are your impressions of Alec Ogletree? Oh, I think he has yeah, he's doing, impressions in four practice. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's doing great. I mean, what, what a credit to him to come in here. And we're down some numbers and inside linebacker. And, and all he's doing is making plays. You can't ask for more than that. This is, you know, he's somebody that over the years here, since I've been in Chicago, too, you go back and look at the tape, he's had a couple picks and he's done some good stuff. So credit to him. You're pretty juiced up going into Family Fest last week just to be back in Soldier Field with some buzz there. There was obviously a fraction of the people there yeah. last week as there's going to be Saturday. Have you allowed yourself to think about what it's going to be like being back in that building? At the I, I did that day of the Family Fest, Dan. I thought it was pretty cool. Just you hear the, the rowdiness. You hear you hear you just see the excitement. You see the jerseys everywhere. And that's what that's what it's supposed to be like. So I know when we get there um, for our first time at home, it's going to be awesome for so many people. And you feel it around the city everywhere you go. You just the excitement that's there. And I love it. To the beginning of training camp about the wide receiver competition. You're three weeks into training camp. I know, of course, Allen Robinson and Darnell Mooney are pretty solidified in their positions. But what have you seen from everyone else at the position? What are you looking for, and especially going towards your first preseason game? Yeah, there's a ton of competition, and, and Coach Furry's done a really good job at letting those guys understand what's up for grabs. Uh, um, these guys right now uh, are all really putting in a lot of hard work mentally. And now, and then to be able to top that off with being, you know, making plays, there's, there's really, um, you know, from the, like you said, from the third spot down to the tenth spot, tons of competition, and the, the, the preseason is all going to play itself out. Now that said, the other part that's huge here that I brought up to you all before is, is special teams. And so as you get going there with some of those guys, they got to, it's going to be a great chance and a great opportunity for them to separate themselves or maybe give them an edge, two ways. To be good in special teams and to know multiple positions in this offense. Are we have time for one more? Or not? You guys good? Wow. Thanks, man. Thank you, man.